I know what you're thinking. You are thinking, Mr. Duncan, you are here at the wrong time. What has happened? There is nothing wrong with my clock. In fact, the reason why the time is different is because early this morning, we put the clocks forward by one hour. And that's the reason why the time is different. Coming up today, we'll be talking about old wives' tales. What is an old wives' tale, I hear you ask? Also, Mr. Steve will be here at three o'clock with lots of chat. Yes, he is back from his travels. And of course, it wouldn't be live English without you on the live chat. After all, it's a Sunday afternoon here in the UK. It's just after two o'clock and this is Live English. A dooby dooby do 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 be do do do. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful day we are having today. <gasps> I hope you are here. I hope you have joined me at the right time. As I just mentioned, everything has changed as far as the time is concerned. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? I really, really hope so. So here we go again. It's Sunday. Sunday again. These weeks are really flying by. They are flying by. They are going by so fast. So here we are coming towards the end of March and April is just around the corner. In fact, a week from now, it will be April the 1st. And next Sunday is a special day for another reason. Do you know why next Sunday is a special day? Do you know? Maybe you can tell me later. Lots of things going on today. Oh, first of all, well, of course, we must take a look at the view because today is a glorious day it is so beautiful I hope the weather where you are is nice but early this morning we put the clocks forward by one hour because officially it is the start of British summertime now I know this is going to get very confusing because we are still in spring so it is still springtime but now the clocks have changed in preparation for summer arriving. I know it's very confusing. It's very confusing, but it's still spring. So let's have a look at the view this morning. I woke up this morning to this. Oh, my goodness. So there it is. The actual view this morning that greeted me as I woke up. <gasps> there it was. Of course, some people might say it's very strange to sleep in your garden, but there you go. I'm a bit of a strange guy sometimes. So there is the view that greeted me as I woke up. And there we are looking across to a place called Little Wenlock. So in the distance, the place you can see there is called Little Wenlock. It's true. Apparently, Little Wenlock is supposed to be the highest village the highest village in England. It is supposed to be the village that has the the highest point or the highest altitude. And there we are looking out towards Shrewsbury. <gasps> this morning, the view was quite amazing. Look at that almost complete blue sky. So there it is, today's view. And to be honest with you, there is pretty much the same view at the moment outside. I'm hoping that we will have a chance to go outside later if we have time, because we have a lot of things to do today. Of course, we have you on the live chat. Let's have a quick look at the live chat because I don't want to forget you. And there we go. We have Fuong here. Hello, Fuong. Hello, JC Geordie. Hello. 
Martha Martha is here hello Jamelia hello to Alam Alamgia Hossein it's amazing yes we had a lovely lovely morning here and to be honest the afternoon is looking quite good as well analytic brain mr duncan how have you been going hope you feel fit and healthy yes i'm okay thank you very much a very busy week of course i was here on wednesday night as well with my late and live even though we had a few technical problems the other night so i'm keeping my fingers crossed today that we don't have any problems today with the technical things you know what technology is like quite often technology will go wrong normally when you need it most so the other night on wednesday we did have some technical problems i'm hoping that i've sorted them out so i went for a lovely walk yesterday and yes you can tell that spring is on the way and summer is not far away following spring because look look what i saw yesterday poking out of the ground you can see already that the the wild garlic is coming up if ever there was a sign that spring is on the way and summer is not far off either it must be the sight of wild garlic beginning to come out of the ground there it is some lovely wild garlic that i spotted yesterday on my walk do you like garlic do you like eating garlic some people like it some people don't like it personally i love the taste of garlic the more garlic the better last week i had a pizza with mr steve and i put so much garlic on top of the pizza it was absolutely delicious do you like garlic i know a lot of people don't they find the taste rather disgusting but i absolutely love it so spring is here would you like to see some new lambs would you like to see some baby lambs okay let's have a look right now oh look at that isn't that beautiful a beautiful scene with the the ewes and many of the ewes at the moment are giving birth to their baby lambs and there oh look there's one of them now running away <laughs> i think lambs are very shy so there you can see the view a beautiful view not far away from my house and you can see there are lots of newborn lambs because spring has definitely arrived there are lots of little lambs and in the evening you can hear them all you can hear all of the lambs bleating bleat that's a great word so the sound that the lamb makes is bleat bah, bah. Bah. bleat i'm not sure if the ewes are very happy with me filming them they look a bit nervous so there are some more little lambs can you see them aren't they absolutely lovely they're so cute so in the early hours of this morning british summertime arrived but of course it is still spring at the moment here in england so yes it is quite confusing at this time of the year because some people say that summer has started because we've put the clocks forward for british summertime and other people say that it's still still spring so as far as i'm concerned it's still spring so springtime is definitely here now and as if you needed reminding look at that some beautiful little newborn lambs <laughs> oh my goodness i don't know about you but i always get very very happy i always become very happy i have a big smile on my face whenever i see lambs the only problem with lambs is they also taste very delicious as well that's the only problem 
and there they are posing for me posing for a photograph lots of lovely newborn lambs I hope you enjoyed those images so spring is definitely here now would you like to hear some of the spring sounds I have a microphone at the moment in my garden so listen carefully you will be able to hear some of the spring sounds can you hear them can you hear the spring sounds birds singing in the distance it's a beautiful spring day even though it feels a lot like summer I must be honest so I'm hoping later I'm hoping that we can go outside for about 20 minutes towards the end of today's live stream we have mr. Steve here yes mr. Steve will be here after three o'clock <laughs> Dib 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 dib. Yes, it is Sunday afternoon, and this is live English live from the UK, or more specifically from England, or even more specifically from my little studio on the side of Wenlock Edge. Hello to you, and I hope you've had a really good week. Next Sunday is a special day. Do you know why? Why is next Sunday special? can you tell me why it is so i have a feeling that there are some people who haven't joined me yet because they are getting confused with the time change now normally we follow this which is gmt greenwich mean time but now we are following <laughs> bst BST which is British summer time so there you can see on the screen BST is now the time zone that we are in because we have put the clocks forward by one hour so that means my live stream for some people will be actually appearing at a different time even though here in the UK the time is exactly the same because we've put the clocks forward by one hour so BST means British summertime and for the rest of the year we follow GMT which means Greenwich Mean Time which is the area in London where the time zone begins around the whole world mm, it's true so next Sunday is a special day but why I will be revealing the answer a little bit later on lots of people on the live chat I don't want to ignore the live chatters or else I will get into trouble I hope the spring will come to Russia in three or four weeks me too yes I hope you have some lovely spring weather in Russia very soon Anna Maria says very entertaining oh thank you very much do you mean my live stream oh thank you Tobagega says oh hello it's a good idea in Egypt it should also be done in Germany oh I see yes because some people put their clocks forward and some people don't they don't do it Pedro is here hi Pedro hi also to Garcia we still have snow here says Garcia oh my goodness well we had snow a few days ago in fact this time last week we had snow but today the weather is absolutely gorgeous it is a beautiful day would you like to hear the sound from outside here it is again 
Can you hear the birds singing? <laughs> it's springtime. Spring has arrived. Yes, it feels very, very good. I must admit, I always feel very excited when spring comes. TS says, Mr. Duncan, how is the feeling when you spend your life in one second, but the clock said that it is one hour? I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure what that actually means. <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean by that, TS. Gajenda says, hello from India. Oh, hello to India. I, I like saying hello to India because I don't normally get the chance to do it. So a big hello to everyone watching in India at the moment. So spring has arrived. Would you like to see some more spring views? OK, just for you. Here are some more lovely picturesque scenes of the spring weather. Yes, the view in my garden. It's a beautiful spring like day, even though the clocks did change this morning. For those who are getting a bit confused, I will mention this a few times because I think it's very important to mention that the clocks did go forward by one hour. And that is the reason why my appearance seems to be at a different time, even though here in the UK it is the same time. Mika Ode. Hello, Mika, watching at the moment in Japan. Hi. Yes, you are right. There is some cherry blossom in the garden. It is starting to come out. Aman Amanaria says hi from Hungary. Hungary. Hello to Hungary. Talking of Hungary, I'm feeling very hungry at the moment because I haven't had any breakfast. I was rushing around this morning doing all sorts of things and I forgot. I actually forgot to eat my breakfast. So I've had no breakfast. I've had nothing to eat today. Pedro says, do you drink alcoholic drinks? Do you mean me? Do I drink alcoholic drinks? Very, very occasionally, normally for special occasions, maybe if I go to a party or perhaps if I go to a wedding. <gasps> yes, weddings. <gasps> Do you like weddings? Do you like going to weddings? Because I am going to a wedding very soon. Myself and also Mr. Steve, we are going to someone's wedding. A lovely friend of ours called Emma is getting married. Would you like to see a video lesson that I made 11 years ago. I'm not joking. We are about to have a look at one of my first ever video lessons that I made 
after returning to the UK and here I am visiting some of my friends and also attending a wedding with Mr Steve and see if you can spot just how young we look just how young we looked 11 years ago <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. Today I'm at a friend's wedding. So whose wedding is it today? This is the wedding of um, some relations. Of Your cousin? Because yes, that's it. Yes. What's her name? Emma. Emma? Oh I see, okay. And James. And James. Emma and James. Emma Harper. Very nice. A traditional English wedding normally consists of three parts. You have the church service when the bride and groom are blessed. Then you have a special reception where all the friends and relations meet together and have a meal. And quite often also in the evening you'll have a, a large evening dinner and maybe a, a disco with people dancing and needless to say drinking lots of beer. We've now arrived at the wedding reception, so let's go inside. So here we are at the reception and uh, as a starter we have voila look at that salmon mousse mm. One of the main differences between having a meal here in England and having one in China is they bring the courses separately, whereas in China they bring all the courses at the same time and pile them in the middle of the table. But here, each course is served one by one. Okay, I'm getting very excited now because the main course is coming. Mm. That's a nice wave. Cheers! Okay, the main course has arrived, and look, we have gravy as well. Look at that. Mmm. Lovely. Mixed vegetables, lamb, potatoes, and a lovely, beautiful silver gravy boat. <laughs> this kind of dessert is called profiterole. It's a soft pastry with fresh cream inside. Um, believe you me, it tastes delicious. Not easy to eat with one hand. Lovely.
<laughs> Firstly, to Frank, thank you for the very kind words. Oh, it it meant a lot. Uh, I'm surprised I'm not crying. <laughs> yeah, it meant a lot. Uh, I would like to thank you for the great start you've given Emma in life. Since I first met Emma's family, I've been made to feel very welcome, sharing many of the family values I was taught growing up. And today, of course, I haven't just gained a wife, but also a second family. I wanted to know how much the support and guidance that you have offered to Emma and me over the years has meant, especially in the last 18 months, because without your help, we would not be here today. Happy couple. Well, the party has come to an end and it's time to say goodbye. From me, Mr. Duncan, here in England. Cheers. <laughs> It's a Sunday afternoon, I don't know what time it is where you are, because the clocks have changed. In the early hours of this morning, we put the clocks forward by one hour. So just in case you are wondering why I am on at a different time, I'm not. It is the, the right time here, but maybe not where you are. So you might have to adjust your time for joining me next week okay okay and of course you can catch the live stream later on as well when it is repeated on youtube hopefully with some subtitles as well lots of people are saying hello the live chat is bursting at the edges you and mr steve look very young in the video thank you very much for that <laughs> we, we we certainly felt young some people are saying, Mr. Duncan, you look younger now than you did 11 years ago. How is that possible? I don't know. Maybe I'm getting younger. <laughs> Maybe I'm like Benjamin Button. Maybe I'm getting younger and I will end up as a baby again. I don't know. Garcia is here. I am one hour ahead of you. Oh, OK, then Garcia. Well done. Resolver is here. Did they have children? Yes. Emma and James now have, I think they have two children. I think they have a boy and a girl. So yes, they have two kids now after 11 years of marriage and they are still together and still very happy. In fact, when I first posted the video onto my YouTube channel, they said, oh my goodness, all of my friends have been watching the video that you made at our wedding. So thank you to Emma and James for giving me permission to show the video on my YouTube channel. And yes, they have. I think they have two children now and they are still happily married after 11 years. Wow. So a very good example of how a marriage can last. I love this lesson, says Jamelia. Really? Thank you very much, Jamelia. That's very kind of you. Sniper DZ or Sniper DZ says, how is the lifestyle in England? Could you tell me the lifestyle? If you wanted me to give you a very brief summary of lifestyle in England or in the UK, I would say that we are probably 
reasonably comfortable with our lives there are some people who do struggle to survive they have to struggle they have to have maybe two or three jobs to make ends meet if you make ends meet it means you have to find enough money to survive you just about manage to make ends meet so there is poverty in this country but not much not much poverty and of course there are social problems just like any other country so and of course we do have a class system here as well we have working class of which I I would place myself in that group I am working class I have to work to survive <laughs> just like many people do but I would say that life in England is quite comfortable quite comfortable not too bad we we still have complaints to make we still moan in fact that is one thing that English people do very well and that is moan we do like to have a little bit of a moan sometimes even though life in this country is quite good so there i hope that answers your question live chat is very busy fiana hello fiana congratulations on your lovely spring day thank you very much that's very kind of you why don't you get married says fung thank you fung why don't i get married well <laughs> what what makes you think that i'm not going to get married why do you think that i'm not planning to get married i might be for all you know i might be getting married this year or maybe next year who knows <laughs> how is the weather in england yakub the weather is gorgeous today oh my goodness would you like to have another look at the view this morning the view this morning was quite amazing so yes the weather at the moment is gorgeous and there it is again a brief view from the window and that is an actual view taken this morning so there it is the view at the back of the house as well the sun was just coming over the top of the trees ah oh, it was a beautiful morning and there you can see some more views and this is looking towards a place called little wenlock i live in much wenlock and in the distance you can see little wenlock so there it is there is the view this morning for those who are interested the weather today feels very much like spring and of course as i mentioned already i'm going to mention this a few times today the time has changed here in the uk we have gone forward one hour so for some people it might appear that i am here at the wrong time but i am here at the right time because as you can see the time is coming up to 25 minutes to three here in the uk and mr steve will be here at three o'clock lots of things to catch up with from mr steve because he wasn't here on wednesday i don't know where he was he disappeared he vanished so we'll find out all about that later on on friday i went to the dentist as some of you might know i don't like going to the dentist not one bit i don't like going to the dentist and there are various reasons for that i will let you know why i don't like the dentist in the moment but something very strange happened on friday whilst at the dentist now the lady who was doing my teeth she was checking my teeth to make sure that they are okay and first of all she was very pleased with my teeth she said duncan your teeth are really really good you have kept them in very good condition but one of the strange things that happened on friday at the dentist she actually got me to help her whilst she was treating me so i i had to hold the thing that sucks the water out of your mouth you know the thing it's like a suction tube it in your mouth so she asked me to hold it because her assistant wasn't there so because her assistant wasn't there that day i had to help her with the procedure so i was holding 
the, the little tube that goes into your mouth while she was working on my teeth it was a very strange moment I was actually hoping that she would reduce the bill a little bit so I wouldn't have to pay so much because I gave her I gave her some help but no no the bill was exactly the same as it always was dear me yes it sucks all of the water out of your mouth it's uh it's a horrible sound so i don't like the dentist but why why don't i like the dentist well here is the reason why Growing up is not the most pleasant of events. It is often filled with scary moments and unpleasant experiences. Of all the upsetting and traumatic moments from my childhood, one in particular still lingers strongly with me. I would have been about eight years old at the time and I had to go to the dentist for a multiple extraction. This procedure involves the removal of many teeth at the same time in my case it was 10 yes I had 10 teeth taken out in one go this is normally done whilst the patient is under anesthetic in those days they often used nitrous oxide to put you to sleep many of you will know this particular substance as laughing gas So try to imagine the scene, an eight year old boy under anaesthetic, having 10 of his teeth removed. If that wasn't bad enough, after the procedure ended, I was not fully revived. I had not come round from the anaesthetic, which meant that my parents had to carry me unconscious through the dentist's waiting room and out to a waiting car. My only real memories of this event include the moments just before the laughing gas was given to me via a large rubber mask which was placed over my face in the dentist's chair and much later as I came round from the anaesthetic itself at home. Even to this day I can still recall the foul taste of stale blood in my mouth not to mention the strange sensation of having ten of my teeth suddenly vanish this horrific experience put me off going to the dentist for many years needless to say these days a trip to the dentist is not as traumatic as it was in my childhood modern dental surgeries are more welcoming and the procedures are over much quicker of course even now going to the dentist still has its unpleasant moments the worst part of it for me must be the scrape or scale this is where the dentist removes the hard plaque that is built up at the base of the teeth with a sharp tool this particular scaling procedure can be very painful indeed it all depends on how badly affected the teeth are so the more you look after your teeth the shorter the scaling procedure will be these days people are becoming more used to taking care of their teeth on a daily basis so much in fact that nowadays doing your own dentistry is becoming commonplace there are lots of wonderful gizmos and tools available now for cleaning your teeth thoroughly at home things that poke things that scrape things that squirt and things that buzz and hum do-it-yourself dentistry is becoming the norm with home dentistry kits now available for purchase on the internet although i wouldn't do it myself without having had some form of guidance or training first Surely one of the worst dental procedures of all must be an extraction. An extraction is where a tooth is literally pulled 
out of the jawbone just like I had when I was eight some people even pull their own teeth out I can't imagine anyone wanting to pull their own teeth out can you these days most dental work is carried out with the patient awake and conscious this includes the drilling into and extraction of teeth normally a local anesthetic is used in the form of an injection into the area of the gum where the procedure is to be carried out the injected part of the mouth will become numb thus ensuring that the procedure will be a painless one how often do you go to the dentist do you like going to the dentist when was the last time you went to the dentist neglecting your teeth is not a good thing to do as when you get older they will become unhealthy and fall out bad mouth hygiene has also been linked to other physical ailments such as heart disease and certain types of cancer fortunately for me i learned my lesson before my teeth became too bad which is definitely something to smile about it is true no one likes going to the dentist the dentist is not a very good place to go i don't know what it is whenever you go to the dentist when you first walk in to the waiting room something happens everything around you seems to change suddenly your mood alters you feel very nervous a little apprehensive maybe because you are about to go into the dentist's chair so yes I had a terrible experience when I was young they took 10 of my teeth out at the same time 10 a very bad experience is going to the dentist expensive I, I think someone asked that question earlier yes it is certainly in this country it is very very expensive Rosa so yes going to the dentist in england or should i say the uk as well is quite expensive very expensive that is one of the reasons why many people don't go and of course they end up losing their teeth because of poor hygiene so of course you can have free dental treatment as well on the national health service but quite often there is a long waiting list for that there is a long waiting list or should i say a long queue so yes uh, you, you, going to the dentist in england is a very expensive thing and that uh, as i always say you never see a poor dentist <laughs> dentists are always very wealthy having said that my dentist jonathan he is absolutely brilliant he is probably the nicest dentist I've ever had so I think if your dentist is a nice person then it puts you at rest it puts you at ease you don't feel so nervous when you have to have your teeth done <gasps> still having said that I don't like the dentist very much at all Khalid is here hello Khalid hello there from Freiburg in Germany uh, I am originally from Morocco I am a big fan of yours I really want to visit you someday as you are most welcome to visit where I am thank you Khalid for that that's very kind of you ten teeth in one go is too many yes I agree <laughs> I agree it was a horrible experience a very traumatic experience thank you Mika for, for, for sharing your your sympathy there thank you very much for that 
Juwera says I don't like the dentist <laughs> I don't think anyone likes the dentist really who likes the dentist unless of course you like pain there are some people who like receiving pain and maybe they enjoy going to the dentist maybe they get a thrill out of it but I certainly don't what is your brushing technique Oh, I see. Let's have a look. Uh, brushing technique from the live chat. I've just met my dentist twice to check my teeth. Thank you very much, Fuang, for that. And it cost me a large amount of cash. Yes, me too. It's very expensive going to the dentist. Suresh asks, are you now brushing? Do you know your brushing technique? Well, I always brush my teeth three times a day in the morning, sometimes after lunch and always before I go to bed. I spend a very long time these days brushing my teeth. <laughs> Some might say that I've become obsessed with brushing my teeth. I think I have. I think sometimes I'm very obsessed with my teeth because I think that maybe they will start to fall out. And, and if I had a choice, if I had a choice between losing my hair and losing my teeth, I would rather lose my hair. I don't want to lose my teeth. Definitely not. I want to keep my teeth forever. <laughs> at least I'm trying to anyway. Would you like to have a look at today's mystery idioms? Here they are now. Mystery idioms. Here is the first one mystery idiom number one it is something that is used a lot in the English language it is a well-known expression in English but what is it it is a well-known expression in the English language and here is mystery idiom number two this is something that you do so there is a clue for this one this is something that you do and just to give you another clue everyone does it so there it is there's the second mystery idiom and there is the first one but what are they the answers are coming towards the end of today's live stream we have mr steve coming in 10 minutes lots of things to talk about today i thought it would be interesting to have a look quickly at some clock idioms now, in the English language, there are quite a few idioms related to clocks. Tick tock, tick tock. So, clock idioms. Well, first of all, we have clock off. If you clock off, it means you finish work. You officially finish work. So, the time that you end your working day, you often say you clock off that is when you finish your work for the day you clock off there is of course clock on which means to start your day at work so as you arrive at work you clock on some people will record the arrival of their time at work by punching a card in a machine so they clock on but also in English, we can just mean I've arrived for work. I'm at work. I've just arrived at work. I have clocked on. So nine o'clock in the morning is my clock on time. Oh, another one here. This is a good one. I like this one against the clock against the clock to do something against the clock means you do it with a limited amount of time so maybe you only have a minute or maybe 10 minutes or maybe 20 minutes to do something that means you are working against the clock you are doing it in a limited amount of time you are doing it against the clock but do you know any clock idioms anyone out there know any clock idioms at all let's have a look shall we 
mr. Duncan I'm going to leave I will watch the second part at night see you on Wednesday oh okay Pedro Pedro is going he has something very important to do I think Pedro is going to watch his favorite TV show that's what I think Alisa or Ailsa is here hello Ailsa have we have we spoken before have we said hello to each other before I'm not sure Goshia says I am against the clock for doing my dinner oh I see so Goshia has a limited amount of time in which to make dinner so you are working against the clock Silvana is here hi Silvana glad to see you again I'm learning a lot with you thank you very much for that from Brazil but now I'm living in France oh a big bonjour to you Tomek says around the clock yes that's a good one thank you Tomek for that if you work around the clock if you work around the clock it means you work for many many hours sometimes you might find yourself working late into the night we can say that you are working around the clock you are spending a lot of time at work you work around the clock Bella is here hello Bella nice to see you also Oleg is here oh punch the clock yes you can punch the clock that means that you arrive for work officially or of course it can mean that you finish your work officially you punch the clock you clock on and you clock off we can also use the word clock as a verb yes T Jen also <laughs> believe it or not clock can also mean to hit someone so if you if you punch someone in the face you clock them you clock them you give them a good hard clock also if you clock something it means you spot something you see something for example I have clocked mr. Steve in the studio he's preparing for his live moment at three o'clock so if you clock something it means you see something you notice something you clock something or of course you hit someone you give them a good clock <laughs> I am against the clock for doing my homework says GG or GG oh really so yes so instead of doing your homework you are actually watching me live on YouTube I see okay well I hope you get your homework done in time and a big hello to China Salwa is here saying hello to everyone oh that's very kind of you thank you very much sniper says I want to visit the UK Mr. Duncan I'm so fascinated by the way they live you are fascinated by the way we live that's very kind of you where is Mr. Steve asks Ricardo Mr. Steve will be here in three minutes time Mr. Steve is just three minutes away are you happy are you excited about that I think so and the big question today is where has Mr. Steve been where has he been because he wasn't here on Wednesday and to be honest with you I really needed Mr. Steve on Wednesday to help me because I had some technical problems on Wednesday night did you see it <laughs> it was a disaster so today I am keeping my fingers crossed that everything goes okay today I am hoping that we have no technical problems today we will find out anyway because mr. Steve will be here did you see him earlier in the in the wedding video he looks so serious a lot of people have said why did mr. Steve look so serious in your wedding video I don't know why by the way it wasn't my wedding it was actually some relatives of Steve's it was one of his cousins Emma and also James and by the way as I mentioned they are both 
still happily married after 11 years isn't that lovely i would love to hear you talk about henry the eighth henry the eighth did not have a good marriage in fact he, his marriages were so bad he kept divorcing and then marrying and then divorcing and sometimes he would chop the heads off his wives he would chop their heads off so henry the eighth really could have done with some marriage counseling i think i think he could have done done with a lot of marriage counseling don't you i don't know where mr steve is does he know it's one minute to three he's not even here yet where is mr steve mr steve where are you i spotted him just but he's disappeared again come on mr steve we are now working against the clock i think mr steve is still very busy preparing so mr steve you are now working against the clock time is running out tick tock tick tock <laughs> oh there he is i can see mr steve suddenly there he is oh mr steve is in the studio everyone are you excited are you thrilled I really really hope so so mr. Steve will be here in a moment back to the live chat very quickly Tom Eck says mr. Steve attended a conference for his work didn't he <gasps> Tom Eck how did you know that how did you know that did have you been watching me again over the bushes I think so Jurira says mr. Duncan can you help me how to learn English yes I can that's the reason why I'm here I'm here to help you with your English another person who is here to help you he's always very willing it's mr. Steve at three o'clock as live as live can be Dibby dibby doop 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 do dibby doop 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 Mr. Steve is here. Hello, Mr. Steve. Come in. This is Mr. Duncan calling Mr. Steve. Over. Hello, Mr. Duncan. And hello you. to everybody out there in the world of English. <laughs> <laughs> How are nice. you, Mr. Duncan? How am I? I'm super duper. Although, to be honest, Steve, I, I could have actually done with you on Wednesday night. Yes, I was away on Wednesday. I couldn't appear live with you in the uh, teaching English, unfortunately, because uh, occasionally I have to go away with work and uh, attend these uh, conferences and things like that. And we were away for three days, uh, team building, uh, as we do. I was in the middle of a forest at a, at, a, at a theme park. I won't say exactly where I was, but it was like a theme park. And we were doing all these these theme team building exercises yes, don't don't say center parks uh, i won't don't uh, whatever you do steve don't say center parks i wish you hadn't said that mr duncan but it, never mind it, that's where we were no i i said i said we won't say center parks exactly we won't so we haven't and i wasn't there at all but we were team building we were in the middle of this forest there was no phone signal uh it's quite stressful really and we had to to do all sorts of things like laser quest and we had to cycle for miles uh, we had to cycle to all these different things and uh, so uh, two miles cycle somewhere do this laser quest and sort of shoot each other with lasers <laughs> uh and uh, and then we had to, to go on to archery we had to cycle another two miles and do some archery wait there a minute steve yes you, 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 they actually gave you a bow and arrow they did yes i had a bow and arrow it was all very safe uh and uh, of course you're in a team so uh, we were in teams of sort of five or six and uh, of course the idea was that there were like five teams of six and we were all set off at different times to do these activities and uh, you had to collect these points along the way and then 
find out who was the winning team. We all went back into the room after two hours, <laughs> found out who was the winning team. It wasn't us. I'm never on the winning team. <laughs> Oh, but what, never what, mind. Why do you think? Why do you think that's so? Is is it you? Do you, do you let everyone down? No, it's all the others. They're useless. Oh, I see. And then we had all the so you had the physical skills, uh, like the archery, and then running around laser quest, and then we had to go on a lake and row across a lake as fast as we could and try and beat the other teams. <laughs> and then they put within your packs some mental uh skills as well like oh. puzzles so as you're going along you have to sort those out in your team so how well did you do at the mental tests well we did quite well with the ones we could google <laughs> so what you are people saying were cheating. what you were saying you actually cheated people were cheating yes yeah. one was you had to they they'd they'd uh, written out all the uh, a particular song uh of of i can't think of it is now <laughs> that a famous group had sung and then we had to fill in the missing gaps where they left out words but of course it was ridiculous really because all you had to do was look it up on the internet it was that, queen that was very easy it was, it was a queen song it wasn't bohemian rhapsody it was actually yes, it, was it was bohemian rhapsody is this the real hmm. life is this just fantasy that's it so we had to they might have said is this just and then uh, there was a gap and we had to fill in the gap Caught Most in of us can land. guess what it was. I'm, I'm trying to do my queen here. Well, caught okay. in a landslide. No escape from reality. That was one of the missing ones. Reality. Reality. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot so, of people. A lot of people earlier, by the way. Guess what I showed earlier? I actually showed the video that I filmed eleven years ago at the wedding of your cousin. Oh. It was that 11 years ago 11 Blimey. years ago and everyone was saying it seems very strange to see mr steve looking so serious because you did look very serious in did the I? video you look very serious yes well i can be very serious i'm a bit silly sometimes when i'm on uh, live with mr duncan on a sunday or a wednesday uh but uh, i can but of course i expect my family were with were with us so i have to be very serious then yes he has to be on his best behavior <laughs> on my best behavior or he gets he gets a smacked bottom no i don't not anymore <laughs> <laughs> apparently i have a sweet voice <laughs> a sweet voice Pe people were enjoying my uh my rendition of bohemian rhapsody by queen <laughs> well that's very good got people very excited apparently so so you had a good time then uh, and of course I, i'm guessing that you were very good at the cycling the other day because i because you told me that you, you were beating everyone yes there were people i don't cycle at all i haven't been on a bike for years and yet for some reason i was able to uh, to uh, to go faster and longer than people who half my age that's incredible so people in their sort of you know late teens that sort of thing and uh, so yes it was all good fun and then in the evening of course the idea is then that everybody goes for a meal and it's about a hundred of us and most of them of course drink far too much mm. alcohol uh i don't i'm very good when it comes to alcohol only because i just don't want to feel horrible the next day so i'm watching them all suffering the next day because they've all got severe hangovers <laughs> and uh, they all think i'm being very good but i'm probably older than a lot of them so I've done all that when I was younger and I don't I just don't want to wake up the next day feeling awful and then having to drive back because it's quite dangerous really so I'm probably a bit too sensible these days we did some bowling as well 10 pin bowling it was all very exciting it sounds like it yes I, I I'm not very good at bowling you know what happens whenever I try to, to, to bowl the ball I always end up injuring my fingers do you forget to let go well I, I let go but but i think it's the strain of of holding the ball and 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 pushing it forward so so it, it really does kill my fingers i end up with really bad fingers for days afterwards so i'm not a big fan of bowling it's probably a strain on your joints yes i think on your so knuckle joints i think so but you've got to have strong fingers you see i've got quite strong fingers and hands and uh you know i chuck the ball down there knock all the pins down yes i can imagine <laughs> with your big banana fingers they always do that we always end up on water as well for some reason 
whenever we have these team building conferences we always end up on water somewhere <laughs> so you were very good you stayed sober I did that's good well I, done. I thought to myself I've got to be sharp for Mr Duncan's live English show on Sunday <laughs> so I need to stay sober <laughs> Uh, because normally I like to get drunk before your shows. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> well, Although I so do have a drink down here, I can assure you it's pure water. Okay, not not vodka. No, pure water. Because we do have some some Russian viewers on at the moment. So the clocks went forward this morning, Steve. I know it's caused a bit of confusion for some people because then it it, it appears to some that we are on at a different time, but here it's the same time but in some places we are appearing at a different time and that's because the clocks went forward summer is on the way but we yes. are now in the midst of springtime <gasps> ah, and I'll tell you something it really for the first time it really feels like spring yeah. outside it's quite warm the sun's out I felt like going out and doing some gardening for the first time uh, you know since the new year I really felt like going out there and 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 preparing the lawnmower sharpening the blades changing the oil I love doing all that we you actually watched a program last night didn't we Mr Duncan where they we were selling this new uh, lawnmower that's just powered by batteries so that that's the new type of lawnmowers now battery yes. powered you charge them up but they're no fun they're no fun for a bloke who wants to sh he wants to clean his spark plugs and change the oil and put the petrol in and sharpen his blade you know these new electric ones are a bit boring i think you seem to be mentioning your blade a lot <laughs> ah yes it needs sharpening you see you've got to have a sharp blade on a lawnmower that's it otherwise so, it uh, you, you, you get, you'll all get left with weird tufts there's nothing cut properly there's nothing worse than a blunt tool there isn't no you that's need it. to keep it sharpened and i was reading because i normally take it to be sharpened take it to a specialist uh, who sharpens lawnmower blades because I'm always a bit afraid with with that that if I take it off it won't go back on properly and it might spin off somewhere when I'm mowing the lawn but I was watching some videos on YouTube last night okay uh, telling me how I can remove the blade and sharpen it myself that'll save me about 12 pounds but don't forget to be careful you, I don't want you to cut your fingers or your hand off no I won't but see last time I took it to be sharp and they didn't sharpen it very well I was a bit annoyed so I spent 12 pounds and it they hadn't sharpened it very well so I'll, I'm going to do it myself I might use a grinder uh, <laughs> along the edge remember when I used the grinder in the studio <laughs> yes that was a very in we, we've still got sort of burn marks mm. everywhere where Mr Steve was was sending sparks around the studio and he was using it on my head at the time I need a vice that's what I need I need a bench and a vice and I can put the blade in the vice and then file it down so that it's really nice and sharp haven't you got enough vices already <laughs> well we won't go into those it's a Sunday <laughs> afternoon and oh, we are, are going to explain that we're coming towards the end of March oh my god it's <sighs> April next week Steve it's April it's and April which means what's coming up have you mentioned what's coming up next weekend not yet we're excited about that I'm very excited I in fact a little bit of wee wee came out earlier I was so excited I wonder what the smell was because next Sunday is Easter Sunday it's Easter Sunday and of course Easter Sunday is an exciting day for those who like eating chocolate and that includes myself and also Mr Steve as well he also likes to eat chocolate oh, yes. also next Sunday interestingly enough it's also april fool's day is it next sunday sunday so it's actually the first of april next oh. sunday yes so it's also yes. april fools now i was a, a bit worried i wasn't sure if you were going you were going to play any tricks on me for april fool's day i wasn't sure uh, the, the trick would be i'm not buying you any chocolate oh i see <laughs> <laughs> well I can always buy my own that's unusual for April Fool's Day to come on uh, Easter Sunday mm. that's very strange I know yes. it's April Fool's Day is always on the 1st of April uh, but of course the the Easter holiday is is a movable is movable it can be a week before or a week after mm. uh, so that moves around a bit so uh, to fall on the same day as Easter Sunday which is traditionally 
if you're a uh, Christian and believe in, in in sort of the Christian teachings that's uh, when Christ was resurrected okay so to have that on the same day as April Fool's Day seems a bit strange to me <laughs> and today today of course is Palm Sunday yes Palm Sunday which is a uh, uh, with this of course starts the uh, the Holy Week which is in the Christian uh, uh, celebration of, uh, of the Christian religion this today is the start of what's called Holy Week ending in in Easter Sunday next Sunday so we're talking about we like the chocolate but of course uh, uh, a lot of religious people watching may may say to us that that really isn't the main point of uh, of uh, it Easter is Sunday it really is. we should be thinking about maybe more religious aspects Easter is all about the chocolate it is to uh, to a lot of people because so it, uh, to me it is yes about. it's chocolate that's all I think about I, think I remember when I was a kid I was always excited at Easter time my, my parents would hide the Easter eggs around the house and we could never find them even though we tried to find them but for some reason they always had a very good hiding place and to this day we never ever found out where our parents hid the Easter eggs we to this day we, we still don't know where they put them <laughs> oh I see but so they put them somewhere and then obviously you were searching the house so they maybe bought them a few days before mm. and hid them but you weren't quite naughty children you yeah. and your sisters and you used to hunt the house to try and look for them I see the same thing happens at Christmas same thing happens obviously but you never found out where we never found out where I would like to know where they hid them I, so if my mum's watching could you please tell me where you used to hide the Easter eggs when we were kids perhaps it was up in the loft we still don't know you look up in the loft we, we looked in the loft we looked in the attic mm, nothing there right. so I don't know where they put them so there we go so it's Easter Sunday next Sunday we will be here of course with lots and lots of Easter eggs I think we I'm, will. I'm expecting a really big Easter egg from Mr. Steve. I was trying to think, why do we eat Easter eggs uh, on Easter Day? I don't on Easter Sunday, and it I is, can't remember why. It is symbolic. Symbolic. Yes, it it has symbolism. Right. This is starting to sound like uh, a religious podcast. Is it to do with the end of Lent? It is yes it, it's a uh, well it's it's symbolic the egg is symbolic of, of uh, I think it because it resembles a rock oh right okay the rock that uh, was in front of the tomb uh, where Christ was was uh, laid after he was after he was crucified which have was it, on Good Friday <laughs> which is next Friday have, have you had some sort of epiphany today no no I'm just <laughs> relaying what Christians uh, celebrate at this time of the year yeah, you know there lots of Christians out there and lots of people of other religions who might be interested you, you know to know you know that I'm they're not endorsing it I'm, I'm just okay we get it Steve <laughs> <laughs> these things are going on so we're talking about them I thought maybe because I've got to tell you now that the the, the Abbey in much Wenlock is now closed the, the, there aren't monks there anymore I wasn't sure if you were going to to join the monastery or something although having said that you've got enough bad habits already <laughs> that's a joke isn't it mr duncan mm. about uh, a habit is something that uh, you do regularly which could be good or bad for you but uh, uh, a monk's habit is that is what is the clothing that he wears with the hood and the brown cloth mm. so uh, there's the joke that's it <laughs> and thank you very much for explaining it so well Oh, I, I hope I did. I'm not sure that I did. <laughs> so it's live English. Mr. Steve is here. It's lovely to see you. Everyone's commenting on how well you look. Oh, and I thought I'd look a bit summery because it's it, it's hot out there and it's lovely weather. And I thought I'll just wear something instead of being covered up. And it's very hot in your studio. It is with all the lights. With all the lights. And I'll tell you something else. There are ladybirds. We mentioned the ladybirds last autumn yes and i men mentioned them on wednesday night as well wednesday night they're there everywhere there's one in crawling over your light there yes they're everywhere and, uh, they're all i don't know how many there are in the house but i've never seen so many well what happens as well steve is some of the ladybirds they hibernate but they hibernate in very strange places they do indeed around the house and then when they wake up they think where am i what's going on it's a bit like 
when when you go to sleep sometimes and you wake up suddenly you don't know where you are i think that must be the same feeling that the ladybird has when it wakes up from hibernation i think it must be very similar although sadly we have killed quite a few ladybirds by accident accidentally stepping on them because they keep landing on the carpet and of I course you can't see them because they're so small so there are lots of dead ladybirds around the house mm. in fact at the top of the stairs there is a big pile of dead ladybirds that, that i've gathered to, to, to throw out later i know they need to they need to get outside they've got a bit of energy left from their hibernation and they need to get outside quickly and uh, and uh, eat something or drink something i i guess i don't I know whether i mean that ladybirds eat aphids don't they that feed on other plants but i don't know what they there can't be many aphids around at this time of the year so i wonder what they feed on maybe they go into a, a flower and uh, have some of the nectar yes i yes i know that maybe they feed on that. other insects but maybe they feed on something else at the start of the season yes i'd like to know that if anybody knows what ladybirds feed on before the aphids come along we'd like to know that's very nice so what have we got today steve uh well we have some interesting things we're talking about old wives tales ah so what is an old wives tale here it is i'll just show you on the screen for those who aren't sure what i said look mr duncan surely you know that i will have prepared a much better <laughs> and yeah. clearer i must version. admit yours looks much better okay old wait there. Wives let me just tale. let me just get rid of this <laughs> what a waste of time that was yes you didn't think that I, well you see that shows you we need to prepare more before we come on old wives tale what is it it's a widely held belief uh that is now thought to be unscientific or incorrect based really on sort of superstition passed down through the generations usually by women but when we say old wives tale we're not talking necessarily about married women we're just really talking about women it's a slightly derogatory term really so it's a bit unfavorable comment to make but it's comes from sort of hundreds of years ago when people didn't really understand how the world worked and they'd sort of look at something and observe something and and and, and sort of think that that was true and sort of it got passed down over the years as a sort of a folklore tale uh, but it was also used to scare children into into not adopting certain behaviors mm. so it's quite commonly used to do that don't do that or this will happen to you that sort of uh, that sort of thing but often it wasn't true it's like when I your mum tells you not to play with yourself well and she says if you play with yourself you will go blind that is if you keep if you keep playing down there with yourself you'll go blind do you know i saw that one i was looking up <laughs> old wives tales and i thought that's an old wife i'm not going to mention that one though because that's a little rude well and mr duncan weighs in straight away just... with with that one there is no subtlety where, where i am concerned yes. so yeah yes so you might say that a good example of an old wives tale is is if is if you 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 play you play down there you have a little bit of an adventure down there you know when you are young your, your mother might say don't do that you will go blind i don't think my mother ever said that no i think your mum your, your mother encouraged you to do it just to get you out of the way the bible even refers to old wives tales apparently there is a mention of it in there telling people to avoid uh listening to them or, or believing them well i think uh, that's where it comes from i think that's where the the, the actual expression comes from i think mm -hmm. it, it it is again once again we, we are straying into religion uh so, it is a i think it is a biblical expression or something that is quoted from the bible when they talk about that so trying yes. to put off people uh of, you shouldn't really be listening to these old tales and fables you should be you know listening to the truth really. you might you might also say it's a bit like fake news <laughs> yes uh but old wives tales there are some that are very old but there are some that are, are more modern and uh it's usually yeah so it's usually used to scare children or a lot of things to sort of talk about pregnancy or childbirth 
a lot of a lot of old tales come in there and i think but we've just explained it but maybe we need to show some examples so that people get an idea of what we're, well you've mentioned one which i was wasn't going to mention myself but you've already mentioned it but here's another one don't swallow gum or it will stay in your stomach for seven years ah uh, we had this one at school as well except the, the chewing one... gum we're talking about yeah chewing gum so you chew the gum and and normally you spit it out or you yes. you dispose of it safely somewhere but when i was little and this is the same thing this happened to me at school at school we always used to say that if you swallowed chewing gum it would stick to your heart and kill you yes so, and i think that's adults or your your mother uh, telling you not to swallow it because they think it's going to be bad for you so they make up a, a story that uh, will scare you so that you don't swallow it uh, in fact if you do swallow chewing gum uh, it it isn't dangerous and apparently but it is your body can't digest and it pretty much comes out the same way it went in apparently mm. uh, but probably not a good idea to swallow chewing gum and so your mother comes up with a story to scare you that's it so uh, you might say that swallowing chewing gum is something that they don't want you to do just in case you choke on it so to stop you from doing it yes, they you give could you a choke on it they course. give you a horror story yes because you could breathe in and 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 it could go into your lungs <laughs> rattlesnakes cure rheumatism <laughs> dear uh surely not one from this country because we don't have rattlesnakes in the uk surely no one believes uh, that well apparently if you uh, it's an old wives tale that you uh you get a uh, a rattlesnake poisonous snake kill it boil it up and then eat it or drink the juice and that's supposed to you're supposed to keep the venom in as well you don't want a rattlesnake that's that where the venom has, has come out because uh, the venom in it is supposed to help you with rheumatism rheumatism of course is uh that condition which elderly people often get where their joints swell up and they're very painful joints uh and uh, that's quite debilitating for 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 people as they get older sometimes you, you hear about your grandmother with rheumatism in her joints could be your fingers could be your ankles normally your fingers isn't it they all go very swollen hmm it's horrible rheumatism it affects all the joints normally in your hands uh, and sometimes in your wrist as well very horrible uh, normally affects elderly people it does but i tell you who it doesn't do any good for the snake the snake doesn't come out of it very well oh definitely not so uh, it's, it's not good for the snake it's not good for the snake here's this another one don't cross your eyes or they'll stay that way ah uh, that's, that's another just one an old wise tale that that's but almost we could almost say an old mother's tale as well because my yes. mum used to say that to me it's also sometimes when i was in a bad mood my mum would say your face will stick like that exactly your face will stay like that forever if you keep sulking something mm. your mother used to she didn't want you to do something uh so say something that will scare you and then you won't do it mm. uh and it'd be interesting actually it, to look at the live chat uh we call it old wives tales but there must be in every country i would think something similar used to describe these old tales that are passed down that really aren't true or based on any scientific fact but that people still use today yeah almost like uh, myths so uh yes like a myth really um so we call them old wives tales but what are they called in your country we'd like to know and if you've got any examples that you use in in and you just laugh somebody says something you say oh that's an old wise tale and you laugh so it'd be interesting to see what you have in your countries out there um right here's another one shaving your hair causes it to grow back thicker uh, a lot of men will be thinking of this one especially men yes. men nowadays you know I, I was watching tv the other night steve and there was a commercial for a special kind of soap that you put on your chest for for men who want to shave their chests Blimey. i'm not joking it's actually a product now there is a product you just you just smooth it over your chest and then shave the hair off your chest well, couldn't but you just used uh, shaving cream would you like to have a look at my chest is not your particularly what's your chest like steve 
oh well, there's a bit of maintenance goes on there do you shave your chest i do sometimes yes because it gets very itchy and irritating uh and i think for some men uh it looks nice but if you've got sort of just straggly little bits hmm. it's neither one thing nor the other so i think sometimes just get rid of it yes yeah, some women like uh, hairy men uh, yes exactly some women like hairy chests on they're a man it makes them feel as though they're really with a real man a masculine person with lots of testosterone i wonder, uh, I wonder what you're going to say then uh so yes i think some i think you tend to if you, depending on what your partner wants or what you want maybe you will either maintain that area or not i mean there's lots of other areas of your body you can maintain uh in that way but yes there is an old wives tale that if you shave your hair uh wherever it is on your body it'll grow back thicker of mm. course it's totally untrue because it just would have got th it probably appears to get thicker but it probably would have done anyway yes. i mean if it was true uh, then any man that shaved it would just get thicker and thicker but it doesn't mm. and of course the irony the is these days what what's interesting steve is that beards have become very popular with men but at the same time they're yeah. shaving their chests very so odd <laughs> they're getting they're getting hair on their face and then they they're getting rid of the hair that's on their body isn't that strange yes <laughs> of course beards suit some men better than others uh and uh you can see some pretty disastrous examples i mean every other presenter on television now in this country has a beard and uh it works for some men and looks awful on others mm. uh, but there you go drinking uh his, his but some of these old wise tales they're not all some of them do, are, are based in are are actually quite true mm. and you could actually say that they're all wise tales but science has proved that in fact there is some fact behind it because probably sometimes by accident people discovered if you did something it probably did work uh, and so like for example chicken soup drinking chicken soup is good when you've got a cold apparently that's an old you think of that as an old wise tale but in fact it is based in in scientific fact now because oh. they've shown that drinking chicken soup it won't cure cure you of the cold but it will relieve the symptoms because there's something in chicken that apparently reduces the inflammation uh in your lungs and and, and your throat so it appears that it's getting better because it's relieving the symptoms so it's not making it better but it appears that it is so there is some basis in fact uh with that so it's almost like something you, you might compare it to like a like a herbal remedy yes so chicken soup apparently is quite good for you when you've got a cold mm. uh uh here's a here's, a, here's a, a a sort of an old wives tale relating to colds again uh eating or having vitamin c supplements will prevent a cold uh that has been proved scientifically not to be true at all mm. but it's still something that uh, people will say uh uh you need vitamin c obviously you need some to be healthy but taking lots of it won't prevent a cold and it, it won't actually uh, stop you getting one it won't really help the symptoms either oh. uh we had in this country many years ago we had uh, a research center which was based solely on their sole purpose was to try and cure the common cold hmm. it was get, went for, 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 for decades in the end they they abandoned it because they couldn't find anything that actually worked <laughs> vitamin c was one of them i think some studies show that if you have a high dose of vitamin c it might slightly reduce the uh, how long a, a cold lasts but generally uh it doesn't really do anything so you might as well just have an orange a day and be done with it <laughs> some do you know some uh, this is another old wise tale can you believe this one smoking prevents colds oh my goodness no that is an actually true held belief in some countries that smoking because the idea is that you've got all this poisonous smoke going down will put in some way kill off the bugs that give you flu yeah. uh, but of course uh, it doesn't do that no it just and, kills the uh, person off 
it, yes, it'll, it'll eventually kill her. I've literally had conversations with people who come from, I won't say which country, and they've said, oh no, smoking's good for you. It actually strengthens you mm. and it stops you getting colds. That's actually a, a belief that is held. Well, as a way uh, of encouraging people to smoke in China, they actually say that it will make you stronger. Yeah, right, there we go. Yes, in China, it was part of the marketing. So uh, they have a very, very, very high number of people who smoke in China. It is absolutely incredible how many people smoke in China. And even this day, to this day, it's still encouraged a lot um, because the cigarette manufacturers want people to smoke, basically. Yeah. Imagine imagine the size of China and, and if even just half of China smoked how many cigarettes you are selling every year but That's you could sort of believe why people would think that because you know smoking all that poisonous you know you could you would imagine that it might actually kill off the germs mm. but of course what it's doing is reducing your, your immune system's ability to fight the cold in the first place in theory um, it seems as if it would work in theory it seems that we might do something a little of what's bad for you does you good uh, but in the case of smoking <laughs> <laughs> the rule doesn't apply there that's like saying if you jump under a bus uh if you jump under a bus th then you can you you will, you will live forever you, buses will never harm you <laughs> here's another old wise tale reading in dim light is bad for your eyes yes reading in dim light is bad for your eyes so do you think that's an old wives tale well apparently it is an old wives tale and reading in dim light does not harm your eyes at all uh using your eyes doesn't harm your eyes uh but the only thing that really harms them is looking in in directly at the sun mm. that will harm your eyes mm. um but actually just using your eyes i mean it might be difficult you might get a bit of strain uh but it won't harm them because okay. the eyes will recover so apparently that's rubbish uh, feed a cold starve a fever <sighs> is my mother always used to say that so if you've got a cold if you've got a temperature the fever you should not eat anything and if you've just got like the common cold uh sniffles or sore throat you should eat more and feed and, and to feed it to fight it off apparently that's been proved to be rubbish as well you should if you feel you should eat on both occasions when you're ill you should always eat apparently because it's strengthening you the last thing you should do when you're ill is, is starve yourself because that is not going to help your recovery apparently but of course if if you're not going to feel like eating probably uh if you've got a bad fever uh probably if you've got a cold it's not going to your cold doesn't put you off eating but if you've got a high temperature of fever uh like the flu and then you probably won't feel like eating particularly if you've got gastric upset as well uh, but you should try and eat something uh, even if it's just chicken soup because that will be good for you apparently yeah. <laughs> uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away mm. uh, is uh, true oh okay uh, that's not a, that so an apple a day keeps the doctor away is not an old wives tale it well it is it is a sort of an old wives tale uh, but in fact it is based on truth because uh, apples are full of uh, antioxidants vitamin c nutrition uh, so it's actually part of a healthy diet so if you do eat not necessarily just apples but fruit uh, then that will be good for you because everyone knows that fruit is good for you so if you have an apple every day it's going to be good for you because it's full of vitamins and minerals and nutrients to 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 help you be well so in fact uh, it, it is a good idea not necessarily an apple but fruit uh, is good for you yes so you might say some fruit a day or well here of course we have this obsession now with having five things every day that are healthy for you so it kind of it seems to be based on that yeah that original idea opening an umbrella indoors that's a more modern one of course because the umbrella hasn't been around for centuries but opening an umbrella indoors is bad luck hmm uh, now I've this is something I always if I ever have an umbrella I don't like that must have been instilled on me from a young age maybe by my mother I don't know 
but I always feel very uncomfortable opening an umbrella indoors because that's something that has been drummed into me from a, a young a young age where it comes from I don't know maybe because they're quite big and if you leave them lying around you might trip over them <laughs> that's probably where it comes from but I would imagine it's probably because you would only really use an umbrella outside but when it's raining so if you were to use inside it's like a superstition all that an umbrella inside because you never see it it's very unusual mm. so maybe it comes from a bit of superstition as well but I never feel comfortable opening an umbrella indoors which you sometimes do if it's all wet and you want to dry it out mm. uh, so yes that's an old wives tale but maybe it's you know maybe it's just maybe it's superstition maybe it's because you might trip over it and cause an injury so what if there's a leak in your house what if there's a leak in your room and you, you want to stay dry you, you 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 might want to put your umbrella up to stay dry so you can't do that so instead you just get soaking wet and get pneumonia and then die maybe put the umbrella on the roof that might be that might be better yes I see I, I, to be honest I don't believe in any of that so no, I, I, well, I have I have many times opened an umbrella indoors yes and look what's happened to you <laughs> nothing <laughs> that's what's happened nothing if you break a mirror you'll have seven years of bad luck yeah I think these are sort of verging into superstition now though yes but they're sort of it comes under uh, old wives tales oh, okay apparently uh have i got any more has anybody what have we got on the live chat i want to see what people oh here's another one wait an hour uh after eating before you go for a swim or you'll <laughs> get cramps and drown is that is that a load of rubbish sort of <laughs> uh apparently you can eat you can go for a swim straight after eating but you probably shouldn't if it's a big heavy meal and you feel uncomfortable hmm. uh, you can sort of get cramps if you go into cold water after having a heavy meal and there are cases where people have said to have died as a result of that so but I think you know if you just have a light snack and then go for a swim it's probably perfectly all right yes you might eat you might uh, eat some food that's very bulky and very heavy yes you might eat a bowling ball and then jump in the water and then of course you sink straight to the bottom apparently there's no evidence to suggest that it is bad for you uh, but you probably would struggle if you were a weak swimmer because if you've had a heavy meal you'll be a bit tired and your body won't want to exercise because all the oxygen's going into your stomach to digest the food so you may struggle if say it got very choppy the waves and you really had to exert a lot of energy you may struggle a bit on a heavy meal you'd certainly find it more difficult to swim just in the same way as you couldn't go for a run after a swim because it would be very uncomfortable one but, um, one that i remember from my childhood was was pointing towards a rainbow if you pointed at a right. rainbow um, i was told that you would get bad luck all oh, right but that's an old wives tale the old wives tale. apparently another one is pointing at a f at a funeral car or oh. a funeral corsairs you know when oh. when the, everyone's going past the or, or being in the back of the funeral car that's very bad luck that mm. not an old wise tale that's an actual fact if you are in the back of a funeral car you are having a very bad day pointing at a funeral possession is apparently and walking on a grave uh yes. that is an old wives tale if you walk on a grave you will you will uh, suck up the spirit of the dead person and then something bad will happen to you that's a an old wives tale as well of course you don't really want to step onto graves because you might fall in you never know do you yes, <laughs> so it's, it's an open one it's the same thing why you wouldn't step on a drain cover because mm. there's always a slight risk you might fall into the drain that's it or maybe also avoiding cracks in the pavement avoiding Some, cracks in the pavement yeah because pe you might fall over so i think most of these old wives tales seem to be preventative so yes a lot of them are to do with yes yeah, stopping things bad happening to you uh or maybe they're related because of course hundreds of years ago people didn't really understand how things happened mm. they apparently another one if if a woman when she's pregnant it's an old wives tale it turns out it's true if a pregnant woman and i've never heard of this one it's just so bizarre you won't believe it if a pregnant woman gets bad acid reflux when she's pregnant 
it means the baby will have a full head of hair when it's born and can you believe it apparently they've done a study and it shows that it's in fact true because the hormones involved in uh, that, that will make a woman have bad acid reflux and a lot of women do get to, uh, problems with acid reflux so like severe indigestion severe indigestion apparently the hormone involved in regulating that will also be the same hormone that uh, ensures that your baby has a lot of hair on its head when it's born that's strange apparently there is a connection so it was not an old wives tale there are lots of old wives tales surrounding pregnancy where uh, mainly concerned with whether you have a boy or a girl mm. uh, if certain conditions are in place or that means you're going to have a girl or all that means you're going to have a boy yes that most of those are completely untrue conceiving on a wednesday yeah, that sort of thing yes do, 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 uh, conceiving whilst both both people involved are standing on their heads yeah there are lots like that surrounding pregnancy but there we go have we got anything on the live chat uh well most compares? of it's most of it's been and gone so let's have a look at the live chat um anything no? about old wives tales well, or other countries? Can, can you see the screen in front of you i can indeed should oh be. do you think eating dog meat will push away all the bad luck i'm not sure oh that's that's obviously coming from somewhere well, i can't read what the who, who where that's from i think that's coming from uh, vietnam but it, it isn't lucky for the dog <laughs> no it's it's definitely not lucky for the dog maybe it's not not actual meat made from dogs maybe it's just dog meat that you would you would feed a dog. oh here's a good one valentine says one more example if you encounter a woman with an empty bucket you will have a bad day oh that's definitely an old wives tale yes never heard of that one i've no, not actually heard of that one maybe that means that uh, you know hundreds of years ago a woman was sent out or was got, went out to get water from the well uh and if she didn't get any she had an empty bucket which means you'll have an unlucky day because you won't be able to find the water either yeah so she's having a bad day so maybe you'll yes. have a bad day as well walking under the rain will cause you to lose your hair says <laughs> olga well <laughs> maybe it's true maybe. maybe i didn't have an umbrella when i was younger that's it walking under the ladder yes don't walk under a ladder well that that uh well take your pick there probably if you walk under a ladder and there's somebody above you carrying something then it might fall on your head so yeah that's definitely i think is a good idea avoid walking under a ladder yes so some of these are kind of superstitions really um yes but the old the old wives tales uh th there is also another expression you can use steve and that is urban myth urban myth an yes. urban myth urban myth and that's very similar but um they they are often modern yes modern myths so things that people believe did happen but actually didn't for example in the film three men and a baby with tom Selleck, ted danson and the other guy that no one can remember ever there is supposed to be a ghost that appears in the movie during one scene there is a scene where they are actually at a window and apparently the 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 thought or the belief is that there is a ghost in that scene behind one of the characters in the right. movie but a lot of people have agreed that it is just an urban myth it is well, an urban myth it is something that people believe but isn't actually real it's just an yes. urban myth yeah, uh, oh like another an one here's time. another one is a this is one of my favorite ones because i am into music uh, there was a song in the charts many years ago called baker street by jerry rafferty and <laughs> I, I love this one and there was a an urban myth that in that song there is a there is a saxophone being played oh yes i know and apparently it was supposed to have been played by a well-known tv presenter called bob holness right and that was the the crazy crazy myth that this tv presenter was the was the saxophone player on baker street by jerry rafferty which was a big hit in the late 1970s 
so that could have come about because maybe somewhere someone somewhere saw saw this presenter playing a saxophone and uh, somehow this story started yes but yeah that's more yes that's uh, that's more of a sort of a a story about something that isn't true mm, an urban uh, myth that's the slight difference whereas the the old wise tales are supposed to be based on fact but of course they're not yes another urban um, myth no, normally in local areas as well you might have urban myths for example where we live there is supposed to be someone that walks around at night the beast the beast of yeah yes village, where we yes. live so yes so that's yes. a bit of a urban myth so yeah. there are lots of urban myths around the uk so if you go from one place to another you will find all of these little stories these little urban myths about what happens in that area or maybe something that a lot of people believe happen but actually in reality it didn't uh, nowadays of course we call it wikipedia <laughs> A lot of people get a lot of their information from Wikipedia. Yeah. There's also a lot of false information on Wikipedia as well. So, yes, let's uh, <laughs> let's not dwell too much on that. Any more urban myths, Mr. Steve? I've just about run out now. I don't have any more. Uh, or old wives tales. Count. Oh, count sheep to fall asleep. Hmm. That's sort of that's what your mother would tell you. But it is sort of part. Apparently that's true. If you count sheep. Uh, then it distracts you from the worries of the day and uh, the visual element of seeing the sheep jumping out of a, over a fence or something uh, it distracts you from the, the worries of the day because don't you find Mr Duncan I know I do whenever I I might be very sleepy when I'm watching the television downstairs before going to bed I might even start to nod off and then I get get ready for bed, get into bed, and then suddenly my mind's very active. Mm. All the worries and the problems of the day come back and all the worries of the next day. And it's very difficult to shut that off sometimes. Um, but something like counting sheep, and it does actually work because uh, it apparently totally distracts your mind away from this thing that you're, things you're worrying about, just enough for you to just go off into the land of Nod. I think it's very similar to sort of meditation though yes that's right it's sort Calm of because, your brain down because your brain you. is staying in one place it's it's focusing on one particular thing so i think it must be very similar to meditation so i can understand mm. how that might work talking of dreams mr steve dreams yes i had a very strange dream last night and apparently you did as well yes i did actually we yes, both I... we both this morning we, we, we were talking this morning about our dreams and steve had a weird dream and i had a weird dream my my dream was was sort of it, it, i think it was something like the x files where i discovered this secret lab where things were going on that were very unusual and there was this very strange it was a human being but it was very very deformed and it was highly intelligent very intelligent but it, it didn't look like a person it looked like something out of alien in a in one of those flasks yes it looks like one of those things that didn't quite work out so so like they tried to, to to develop something but it didn't turn out very well but this this particular misshapen weird looking human was very small and it, it didn't have hands or arms it just had these strange little little pointed spikes that came out of its body I mean. but the strange thing is it could do these amazing things it could play the piano it actually played the piano in my dream and also it was very intelligent oh, what did you eat before you went to bed mr Duncan? but but it couldn't speak but it could it could communicate by typing and it was very intelligent and, and then eventually in the dream I discover that this poor little creature is being held against its will it doesn't want to be there so I rescue it and take it outside and that's it so I, I let it go but when it's outside something very strange happens to it it, it starts to dissolve and break apart I and inside there is another animal that then just runs away and then the dream slowly 
fades away so that's that's my strange dream I'm sure a psychologist would be able to uh, understand what you were thinking of or if you've got any problems that need sorting out in your life uh, did you have any because of course that's a bit of an old wives tale again isn't it that if you eat cheese before you go to bed yes then that will make you dream uh, apparently there's a bit of truth in that yes as well and I certainly know if I have cheese I dream quite vividly uh, but apparently if you eat anything before you go to bed uh, it, uh, it it will uh, uh, sort of gets your digestive system going which at the same time makes your mind more active so eating before you go to bed anything is a bad idea because uh, it's it's activating your mind because you, you you work your body's working a way to digest the food and apparently it makes your your mind active as well so yes. probably not a so it's may not but there is something in cheese tryptophan I think it's called tryptophan uh, an amino acid that apparently uh, it sort of excites your brain a bit <laughs> so you might have more vivid dreams I have a feeling that your uh, brain Steve might have a lot of tryptophan in it I think it's an amino acid I think tryptophan <laughs> I think corrected there by somebody very interesting so what about your dream mr. Steve you had a very weird dream as well Incl uh, that, oh yes that uh, involved that involved a oh, very yes. important person in this yes country. I was it was something to do with the Prime Minister of this country and I was I was some kind of spy yeah. uh, or some kind of working for mi5 or some not a spy I think I was working for mi5 or some intelligence agency and well, that's I was the same to... thing isn't it pardon that's the same thing a secret agent so yes that sort of but I wasn't a secret agent I was sort of I was trying to protect I don't know there was some information about the Prime Minister that shouldn't go get out <laughs> and uh, I was helping to pr keep this information uh, away from the from the press and from the public uh, but I knew what this critical bad bit of information was it might damage the prime minister uh, and uh, I prevented it from getting out but because because I knew about it I had to be killed by oh. the by the uh, secret service so uh, there was this chap trying to kill me and trying to slit the throat and all it was horrible oh, so great. I had to run away and I was and and uh, I, I it got quite mad I had to get a, a new phone and sort of fake my identity I, I went to a joke shop and bought a wig <laughs> joke <laughs> shop what was it a clown wig I don't know but I, I sort of <laughs> you know what can happen when late at night when you're dreaming sometimes when you wake up you actually wake up but you want the dream to continue so you just sort of you sort of carry on in this sort of you're sort of not quite conscious not quite awake state but the dream is still going on sometimes you you wake up and you want the dream to continue because it doesn't end and you want to see how it ends it's quite frustrating sometimes isn't it dreams yeah anyway, i don't know what i had before i went to bed probably a bar of chocolate well i i ate a lot of chocolate last night so that's probably the reason why as oh, well we had some cheese and onion crisps ah cheese that's yeah. what it was it could be that although I have a feeling that there, that there isn't much cheese in those particular crisps I think most of it is just chemicals and colors might have been just enough to get our fevered imaginations going it's very strange though that you had a weird dream and I had a weird dream as well very strange, very strange. we are going soon uh, the mystery the mystery idioms let's have a quick look at the mystery idioms here they are before we go and there is the second one that is something we all do something we all do and there is the other mystery idiom if you think you know what they are let us know just for fun that's all it's just for fun you've got a busy day ahead of you steve today the rest of today yes because i'm, I'm going to a wedding in a few weeks time mm. and I, I was asked because they want to they want to have a choir at the wedding and uh, because they know that I'm in a choir uh, they, uh, they want to they're, they're going to form a, a small little choir and sing about five songs uh, while the wedding is going on uh, normally during the signing of the register and uh, when they when the when the uh, the wedding couple first comes in and then when they go out so we're doing that so I'm going for a rehearsal uh, this afternoon as soon as we finish I'm going to 
get in the car and shoot up off the road and go for a quick rehearsal and then back again uh, but yes that's what I'm doing uh, today so busy day really because I won't be back till late that's the reason why we are wrapping up quite quickly as well to allow Steve to to make his way and then tomorrow I, I, we're in a concert for Easter Ooh, at okay. a local church uh, so I, I've got to get all the music ready for that as mm. well so we're going to be singing some some sort of Easter related hymns and uh, and songs and next Sunday um, it is Easter Sunday and that means just one thing just one thing only to next you. Sunday next Sunday just one thing nothing else lots and lots of lovely delicious chocolate but will you uh, because you're coming on at two o'clock and you will be on next Sunday won't you live yes. on Easter day of course so uh, the thing is will there be any chocolate left before you come on live or will you have eaten it all there would be plenty to go round. you better take a picture if you assuming you get any Easter eggs of course uh, then you better take a picture of them because you well, might scoff them down before two o'clock scoff to eat something very quickly you scoff <coughs> scoff well thank you very much Steve that went very quickly I don't know how I can't believe it because we were going to talk about uses of the word set well we are back next week we can do that next week and we are here on on wednesday night as well don't forget we are so i'm back on wednesday night for those who are wondering let me just show you quickly the times for those who aren't sure sunday 2 p.m wednesday 10 p.m and of course both of those are uk time that's a very U strange looking k is it you it's can of course write it that way but it looks it looks uh it looks like a chinese symbol yes okay <laughs> don't don't worry about it steve and, i'm just uh, saying yes okay <laughs> good i'm just trying to wrap the show observation up. we're just wrapping the show up here steve sunday 2 p.m <laughs> and wednesday 10 p.m and that's when you can find me don't forget they are both <laughs> uk time uk i wasn't going to be here this wednesday but i am now yeah so mr steve will be here on wednesday night as well i hope you can join me just before we go let's have a look at the mystery idioms mystery idiom i can't guess that one mr duncan you can't guess that one the answer is get caught in red tape oh you get caught in red tape the meaning to be prevented from doing something due to complex rules and regulations you get caught in red tape and the bowler the hat and the and the umbrella was confusing me there okay and the second one this is something we all do everyone does it uh, we did have some correct answers to this one spend a penny spend a penny the meaning to urinate Ooh. or go to the toilet for a pee pee or a wee wee is to spend a penny if you spend a penny you go to the toilet because of course uh many years ago in order to go to a public toilet in order to get in you had to you had to put a penny in a in a slot that's it so that's where it comes from so that's why we say you spend a penny it was always a penny to go to the toilet in a public toilet always cost you a penny i think nowadays i think nowadays it's a pound yes well it, it, you used to have to pay then it was free but now you have to pay again now yes i tell you something if i was paying a pound to use a public toilet i would i would make sure i had everything saved up it, it would be coming out of every single hole and of course, I've been on holiday to countries where you uh, uh, where there isn't a slot machine but there's a man in a kiosk and you have to give a coin uh, on your way in to go to the toilet there because it's paying for the upkeep of the toilet and uh, somebody to clean it in Malaysia yes that's right in Malaysia and also in China in some places as well you have to give a few uh, a few sen to uh, someone or a few uh, maybe maybe one jiao in the UK it was a, a coin called a penny so there we go i think we've cleared that one up the the reason why we say spend a penny see you next week steve of course next see week you. it's easter sunday and of course steve will be back wednesday as well 
after 10 p.m. on Wednesday night don't forget it's UK time see you later Steve bye 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 to everyone nice to have your company it's super duper to have you here as well mr. Steve and that's it mr. Steve is now preparing to go and do his singing because he has a busy night ahead of him all I'm wondering now is am I going to have my salmon later so does that mean I'm going to have no salmon am I having my salmon Steve yes you are good okay then no it's okay it's, all right okay Steve we'll stop now we've got to go <laughs> I ask him a simple question and he gives me a lecture so are you are you going oh he's gone now you see oh, he's gone he's definitely you gone said, uh, you said I no too we much. can't we can't hear you Steve <laughs> oh that's a lovely way to end the the very slick live broadcast I'm going now I will see you next Wednesday don't forget late and live we will be here and next Sunday as well a quick look at the live chat before we go by Rosa by Amriwadi by Michelle by also to Martha as well thanks a lot for following us today it's lovely to have you here see you on Wednesday don't forget 10 p.m. UK time and next Sunday of course next Sunday will be the 1st of April April Fool's Day it will also be Easter Sunday as well <gasps> I can't wait this is Mr Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching me for the past two hours and I will see you later on I'm going outside now to spend a little bit of time in the sunshine and of course you know what's coming next yes you do until the next time we meet Ta-ta for now.